the smoke show. Milling out um, yeah. something that should be holders for cross feed knots. For a big day. This, which is so big. So these are the ones that should be manufactured. We will make them in two parts and solder in this. So we make this lower part. So back here. Nine, 90 RPM is it? Not more. Should have been more, but anyway, the mail here protests that it seems to work out. Clearance. This is going to be like this. There is no top 30 millimeter here, but we change this to a 40 millimeter here, and then just uh, mill off the sides so that it becomes like this, or rather like this, eventually. And the brazing, uh, or the rather silver soldering, I did not have any oxy as a tulane, so I used this uh, bulb. brand somatic. Okay, it's actually quite a good, uh, good design, good system. And I um, was a bit skeptical that this would function, but it did. And um, that is because this map gas is 2400 degrees. Of course, I used uh, quite some time, so um, I used up a lot of the, of the bottle. I think, but if the end result is good, that's okay with me. And um, the silver solder I used is this type, is in Swedish, but um, here you see the details, and it's a, it's a flow uh, temperature of 630 to 60 degrees. I don't think it'll move anyway. So these are the nuts as, um, from uh, silver soldering. Um, could have been made many different ways, I think. But um, so what we'll do now is to cut them down so that they are more like the original ones. And also then mill the, the correct height and slot and bore them. It does 
seem like the <coughs> silver solder has penetrated I mean the capillary effect so um, I think that's a good a good uh, bond Um, <clears throat> I also tried to find out the maximum depth of cut I could have and it seems to be like I enter in problem domain around 2.5 millimeters um, use this roughing cutter here on that moderate speed about 100 rpm or so and uh, quite slow feed when I have the at least milling steel here. Um, and the problem I think you hear when it's uh, chattering is actually because inside here the boom here goes back and forth, the motor sits down here. And uh, there are belting and gearing now used on direct feed, belting and gearing that goes up here. To the uh, to a sort of gearing system that uh, uses a splined shaft as the head can move in and out. Spine shaft, the transmission of the of the forces to the I um, mean the transmission to the spindle. So in there somewhere uh, is where I guess in several components uh, inducing uh, well yeah inducing chatter. So setting cut depth. And each division is two hundredths of a millimeter, so I go up the whole revolution of the handle here, which is twenty, nineteen, twenty, and I go one, two, three, four, and five. So then I have. 25 or 250 hundreds of a millimeter 2.5 millimeters and uh, I use slow feed you can feed in faster and slower set the variable speed here also with this handle and I go down 2.5 as I said because it's steel I can I can probably go down three but as you will hear there's a little bit of chatter so um, I try to use up this this substance here which is Cutting fluid. I start the motor. This one, this one on. And the feed. A little noisy. Gauge the lever for the feed is down here. A little bit interrupted cut. The machine copes well really at that point so if I go up to three millimeters it probably will okay be okay but I'm good at that.
we are. And I can move on a little bit faster so we are pressing the whole cutter. The finish is okay, not great, but okay. You see? Okay, I'll be down a little bit more to the line there. Reading this trail here because the DRO is not working. So it's 15 millimeters and 16. I'm fairly pleased with how the, the bracing turned out. What I'm also pleased with is the fit of the nut. These are quite sloppy and these are dead on. And what I'm not so pleased with is the fact that I did not get it completely in uh, the holes are centered, but these in center. Mm, I measured to these knots. I should have measured to the screw instead. So that was a brain fart. So I might have to do them again if he, after some fiddling, can't get it to or rest it in place. And if these aren't good enough, I will make them out of blank stock. And that is one more option, but then I have to buy myself a tap for this, of course, or make it. But, uh, the theory behind these is I think that you wedge in a, um, we have a wedge here that you draw these knots apart. In this case, I made them a little bit uh, tighter so that you see, these ones go all the way together. Well, these ones don't so I made it a little bit tighter also and doing these uh, knots um, was a good test of the mill's capacity and uh, also training to use it as you can see here leaving it in this position now just to show that um, when I did the sides I mounted it to the vise of course and then the 45 here, the the most acute um, uh, angle, and then table moved almost as much as it could out, and then doing the other side, head from almost in to almost out position, and then this one back is much as possible and then tilting the head around to 45 degrees again yeah. roughly there you see there then with this then almost as much as it could go in you'll have a good understanding at the ex you can actually extend, or this design extends the use fullness of this in that, is it Y direction? So I learned to appreciate this mill now, I think, with the capacity. So, and of course, would I want to move the vice in this direction or have a piece that needs uh, the angle in the other direction it's just a matter of doing the angles in this way where i have longer travel of course so it's a versatile mill